the Republic of Georgia engaged in a series of reforms of its public sector during the 2000s, one of the most remarkable was a reform of its border police. Not only did crime drop in Georgia over this period, but the high level of corruption that existed previously was very uh, significantly reduced. In January 2016, I spoke to Eka Gegouri, who was one of the key players in this reform saga, about how this happened. So my name is Eka Gigauri. I am the executive director of Transparency International Georgia. Uh, today, Transparency International Georgia is uh, one of the most active NGO uh, in Georgia. We have five offices around the country, uh, and we work on different issues. First of all, of course, corruption. Uh, then we uh, cover the media environment and media uh, issues. Also, we are monitoring elections. We work on public administration uh, reform. We are monitoring the judiciary and so on. Uh, so um, before I worked for the government of Georgia, so I joined the uh, government of uh, Georgia after the Rose Revolution. It was end of 2004. Uh, from the beginning, I was uh, dealing with the uh, foreign relations uh, in the uh, border police of Georgia. Uh, and uh, after six months, uh, months I, uh, I, had been, uh, I was promoted uh, and became the deputy head head of Border Police of Georgia. Okay. So uh, that was from the beginning the independent uh, institution, the military agency. Um, and um, after the reform, uh, it became the um, police agency. So it became the part of Ministry of Interior. Um, and we moved from military service to the police service. And so I think a lot of people are aware that this was one of the most dramatic efforts to control corruption. Uh, in the police. So could you just explain how you brought this about? Um, it, uh, these were very hard times, so um, these, uh, the, the employees and staff members of the border police and the general police so were involved in corruption and uh, uh, getting money from everything, I would say, starting from, the, um, from their activities when they were standing on the border and checking the documents of, mm -hmm. uh, um, of people and ending uh, with the, um, like, when, uh, with the recruitment, for instance, when uh, one wanted to be employed in, in the police agency, so they, he, he had to pay uh, bribes and then uh, get this job. Um, this, the infrastructure was um, under zero. There was nothing. The people did not have uniforms. They were not motivated. Their they salaries, paid well, so. uh, they, um, they had their salary. So in border police, the salary was uh, $15 or $20 uh, per month. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, so the border infrastructure was uh, very bad, mm -hmm. uh, no equipment, no technology, uh, nothing. Nobody paid attention to what they were doing. Um, and that was really, really very complicated times because especially when, it, when we talk about the border police, uh, it was also directly related to the security of the country. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and we had the cases when also, the border police uh, um, uh, was cooperating, I would say, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, terrorists with, from the neighboring countries like the Russia, so the, the Chechenians uh, from Ingushetia, and, and so on. So it was like really, really very complicated time. So how did you begin to fix this problem? So uh, from the beginning, um, uh, that this was uh, very important to have new people in the agency, especially those uh, dealing with the reforms, um, and also those who, who were implementing these reforms. Uh, we um, did the following, um, uh, of course, we changed the legislation, but also uh, we started the recruitment. So uh, what we did was that we changed the structure of the organization. And so based on that, uh, we could uh, fire everybody because this was totally new structure with the new titles, new names, new units. And so then after that we said, so, okay, okay, so we ha will have now the competition, there will be the exam, everybody should pass this exam, and then everybody's welcome to do so, even the ex-officers, but if you don't do this, then, then you will be fired, you will not stay any longer in the, um, in the organization. So um, uh, we were a, a little bit 
uh, different from from other pol police uh, uh, police um, units um, and uh, the parts. So we did not fire everybody. We just gave uh, the chance to everybody. But unfortunately or fortunately, they could not pass these exams because they were not uh, uh, professionals at all. The only thing that they were doing, they were collecting money from the border. So they did not really, they could not really pass these exams. And so we had lots of new people there. So and you have to train the uh, We also introduced the training program in the uh, in our academy. And so we uh, we involved the foreign donors in that and the experts. So we elaborated the curriculum so they the, everybody uh, should go through this uh, this training. And based on the results, they could be appointed. Uh, they were appointed in the agency. So those who did not pass the exam, they they did not stay in the agency and that was that was like really very important to do um, I would say that of course I went through like um, very complicated uh, uh, period because uh, Georgia is a small country and everybody could call you and ask you for for the relative or somebody who whom they knew and uh, but that was very important to say no mm -hmm. um, and that was the case that was like really really very important to be resistant to this kind of um, um, the, the, um, I would say the, 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 this kind of thing. So, like, because again, so the nepotism was also everywhere in the country. Um, another thing that we did, of course, we. Um, uh, we increased the salaries for our uh, uh, employees. Uh, uh, now the salary became around uh, 200, uh, 250 dollars. Uh, we of course bought nice uniforms for this uh, for the officers. We bought nice cars for them. Um, we also introduced the uh, different software. So we use technologies for that. The border, they were, they, we introduced a special software which will which will. Um, you know, Check the documents of uh, um, uh, of people and identify those who are crossing the borders. Uh, but also, uh, sometimes you know that, that there might be exceptions, and so for these exceptions, we also uh, put the requirement for the officers to put um, so to, so we knew which was the officer in charge of the actions and so then they had to put this exception why they made this exception and so, so you on them yeah we, we made them accountable one very important thing that we uh, we did also was the decentralization so before like the the, the headquarter was was buying all the supplies we had big uh, warehouse where where we were like putting all this uh, the storage like the, where we were putting everything, but then uh, after um, several months, we uh, we just introduced the, the another system, so everybody was in charge of their uh, own region. Mm -hmm. So they would uh, they would uh, conduct the tender. Like of course, it was not about like big tenders, but at some point they could like buy the goods and supplies by themselves, mm -hmm. and they were um, they were responsible for the quality. Um, and from the other side, we created the internal inspection unit, mm -hmm. and so this unit was in charge of monitoring and uh, uh, combating the the the, um, the corruption inside the, uh, inside the organization mm -hmm. so they would go to the regions they would like um, uh, monitor how they are doing what they are doing how they are uh, organizing the tenders how they are organizing their operations and mm -hmm. so on mm -hmm. so that was um, very important so one very important thing was also uh, to uh, erid eradicate corruption in the supplies and uh, tender units that we had. Mm -hmm. So, and um, uh, before there was a practice that uh, um, tender was from one side was organized quite uh, legally, so like you know everybody could participate. But then, uh, then they would uh, bring the samples which were very good from from the beginning, and the cost was. Okay, so and uh, one could say that nothing is wrong with that, but then 
what was uh, uh, happening is that, in fact, they would bring low quality products and so and give money to those who get this from the side of the government, from the side of the border police. So, and um, what we did actually, um, at some point, we let them do this, but then we monitored that. And when the, the suppliers uh, observed that there was no way for them except for like bringing really high for, uh, quality products, mm -hmm. so. Um, um, either we uh, they just went by themselves mm -hmm. uh, or we when when we uh, proved that there was a corruption case of course we passed this uh, this to the to the prosecutor's office and they proceed with that mm -hmm. um, this this was um, uh, very important thing. So, um, in addition to that, of course, uh, uh, we worked with um, with the general planning, like the general uh, planning of the reforms. Mm -hmm. So, we we thought that it would be uh, very important to have uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 link this reform not with the personalities, but uh, uh, with the like the general policies uh, of the government. So that's why uh, we created the um, the. Uh, coordination body under the Security Council mm -hmm. and so that there we had other represent from other ministries as well mm -hmm. so and we uh, elaborated the coordination plans mm -hmm. uh, with them we elaborated the reform plan for the border police and so that was adopted by the um, uh, by the Security Council so it was not the only the head of border police who was in charge but also it was it was approved uh, and adopted uh, on the like higher level, so that that was uh, that was very important. And one thing. Um uh, we, of course, we 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 realized that that was not enough, and uh, the main emphasis were uh, uh, making on uh, on training and retraining, and that was really the biggest investment mm -hmm. that we, that we did at that time. So we developed the training center. We wanted to link the. HR, like the uh, human uh, hum, uh, human resources management, mm -hmm. uh, and the promotion mm -hmm. of the personnel with their trainings right. and qualifications, right. and that was the only possibility to avoid the nepotism in the in the in the system. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you uh, if one or the or if the officer uh, was doing well, if the supervisor um, evaluates him or her well, mm -hmm. if he went through different type of trainings, then that that is um, possibility for this person to be promoted. Mm -hmm. If not, then you leave. You are where you are. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that was also a very important thing to do. Well,